I spent three days wandering the muddy, twisted rivers of northern Zululand, hoping to catch a glimpse of the elusive African finfoot. I always knew it was going to be a tough find, but without so much as a feather so far, things were not looking promising. However, the finfoot would have to wait. The other treasures of Zululand were getting impatient. It was time to head back to camp to regroup, restock, and restart. So focused on my feathered quarry, I'd missed out on a lot of the hidden treasures along the way. And that's just not my style. A warm Betchan reception meant it was good to be home. The students would be having a practical this evening, and I wasn't one to miss out on all the fun. This left me with some time to kill, so I parked the landy and ventured out into the property. Roughly 20 kilometers from Plutlui, Camp at Betchon boasts a wide variety of habitats. Classic coastal bush felt, open curry bush fields, and even denser sand forest. All chock full of the creatures, trees, and plants that the students spend their time studying. I'll never forget the early morning spent learning what you can and can't to eat in the bush felt. What tastes good and what doesn't, though I never quite got that part right. We walk this fence line um, almost every morning when we're here in camp and it's quite nice, we, we check for, for snares, the guys cut the, the electric fences and they'll, they'll use the wire from the fence as a um, snare material and put it up in the property. Uh, so we check for any damages, check for holes, bush pig like to dig underneath and do a bit of bird watching as we go but my favourite part is tracking a uh, young female leopard who does the same patrol as I do. So we kind of follow after each other, uh, hoping one day to bump into her. But until then, you kind of get to know the same animal. She's kind of playful, she jumps all over the road, she doesn't just walk straight. Every now and again, though, you find a big male leopard track. There's one big male that wanders through here occasionally. And his, his tracks, they have determination, he has a destination, he's gonna go from one place to another, he just walks straight and goes, whereas the female, flicks all over the road and she's got a little bit of spirit and that's kind of fun. Giant land snail. Dung beetles may be one of the most loved and iconic uh, creatures of Africa, but they're also one of the most vital. In one hectare, dung beetles can bury up to a metric ton of fecal matter in a year. Now that not only fertilizes the earth in a clean way that uh, makes the bushveld look sparkling, it also reburies any uh, seeds that were eaten, springing forth a new generation of plants. This is a telepod, your classic ball rolling dung beetle. He's rolling his ball either to a female wedding back at a hole where they will mate and then eat the ball together. Or, if they've already mated, they'll bury the balls below ground and lay a single egg within each sphere. The fecal orb then becomes a form of cocoon for the larvae growing inside, as it slowly eats its way out, until what was once its first home becomes its first meal. 
I walked past on this path about 30 minutes ago and there was a full sized pile of zebra dung sitting right here on my way back all that's left is one ball. A world without dung beetles would be a messy one not to mention a lot less fun <laughs> and goofy As the sun began to set, students from all over the property began to gather. A nighttime excursion was underway. As the nocturnal creatures of Ethlatini Bush Camp began to stir. Don't forget to subscribe and keep up with the latest adventures and read about my greatest journey yet in my book Josh's Big Year, Deserts to Jungles. Let the treasure hunt continue.